Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode on the Owl Podcast. I am joined by my co-host Danielle Santelli to my right and to my left, Jessica Graves, who's going to talk all about the yachting world today. We are very exciting and also about TV, editing, copywriting, a little bit about everything or journey in TV out in L.A., New York, as well as South Florida, of course. Uh, but before we get things going, Danielle, you have a big announcement today, don't you? Yes. Um, so I released, you guys know, you guys listen to the podcast. So you, by this time, for those of you that listen, you know I'm a singer-songwriter. I released a new single today. Um, and it's kind of ironic because it's called Waves. And it's literally about the ocean and the beach and how I love it. And I recorded it um, because I had some opportunities to perform on yachts, which is kind of, again, like a funny coincidence. Um, and so I was like, oh, you know, I'm making some demo reels. Let me add this original song about the ocean and the waves and how it's my happy place. So it's the first week of summer as well. So I figured I would release that today. And it's just kind of a coincidence that we're also doing Yacht Life TV today. So go check that out on Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere you listen. Uh, just Waves by Danielle Santilli. And congratulations on that. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, you want to hear it from her own mouth. Call her on Owl and she'll sing it to you, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, if this is your first time tuning in, this is the podcast. We get to interview the best experts all around the United States. A lot of them fly in just to be on the OWL podcast. And the best part is you could call these OWL professionals, these influencers, these pro athletes, celebrities, right on the OWL app. Most of them are brand new when they join us on the OWL podcast. And then the beauty is they're only $1 for their first 10 calls because they love giving back. Right? How cool is that, that you could talk to Jessica for one buck starting today? Right. Isn't that pretty cool, Daniel? I would definitely give her a call. I'm like, I'm going to call you later. <laughs> yes. So. And, and I'm going to make a big announcement, too, is starting on Monday. Right. We are going to do this thing called Mentorship Mondays from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're going to start partnering with other organizations that have mentors. Right. So when you look at the FA2, FAU Tech Runaway that Al was part of. And I just was a graduate of, you know, I was fortunate to have four mentors every single month. I could pick their brain on all different topics. But when we look what's going on with solo entrepreneurs, they all lack mentors, mm -hmm. right? They always say like, oh, I always hear on podcasts, I want a mentor. Mm -hmm. But then how do you find one? Like you're in the music business, right? Yeah. How do you find a mentor in the music business? I literally was looking for a mentor for the longest time. And I'm like, oh, I want them to just fall out of the sky. Like how does this Everyone happen, does. right? And yeah, Owl is the perfect place. Search your industry and you connect with someone and yep. you make a genuine connection. And yeah, they love to help you out. So so how cool is this? So every Monday, all these experts that want to participate will drop their price. If they're listed at $100, they're going to drop it to $1. They could go live for 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, whatever they determine. And they're going to give back. Mm -hmm. So we're going to change things up because everyone wants to give back. We have so... Many people that are retired in their 60s, 70s, 80s, they're sitting on their couch and they want to, they just don't have a platform to do it, mm -hmm. right? And lots of times they don't want to drive to a local university park and then go in and then mentor. They want to do it from their couch. Mm -hmm. So I was going to enable that. And Jessica, you don't know this, but we're going to feature you on Monday. <laughs> and I hope you could participate with us and be one of our, our first experts to, to do Mentorship Mondays. Is is that okay with you? That sounds fabulous. I mean, awesome. I definitely believe in the power of mentorship. And you're right. It's a very important thing, and it's hard to find. Mm. I've always enjoyed giving my own unsolicited advice to people who are coming up in the industry. Yeah. And, and now they know where to find me. So let's kick into your backstory. Tell, tell our audience, you know, what is Yacht TV all about? How did, how did you come up with the concept? And, and how did it all start in your early days? Okay. You, know, you went to college and then all of a sudden you graduated. Like what state were you living in? How did you find mentors to help you get going? Did you even have a mentor, I guess? Let's I did. Yeah, things. I've been very fortunate that I've had a lot of nice people that have yep. been willing to talk to me over the years, um, depending on which field I was in. 
So I graduated from University of Florida, and I started in NPR at University of Florida and also on television, and I enjoyed being a news anchor and a news reporter, and that's where I learned how to edit. It was linear editing back then, and the cameras were massive. So I got quite a workout being a one-woman band. <laughs> not like these days where you <laughs> could go like right that. into an app and like change words, put captions on there, and then take an hour video and put it into one minute, and boom, you got a reel. Like back in those days. Oh, and we're talking live not, shots. Not easy, right? No, the, and we're, we're talking about live shots as well. So anything that can go wrong typically does. <laughs> and, you know, it's there's no editing. There's no post. So I, d I did the news, um, you know, track for quite a while. And after I graduated, I took a job at a CNN affiliate in Austin. I worked the overnight shift for about a year. Realized pretty quickly that news was not my jam. So I decided, let me pack my things, go to um, Los Angeles, where I eventually landed a job at E! Entertainment and red carpets that was my that was my wheelhouse I want to talk about who's dating who who's wearing what on the red carpet and who's winning an Academy Award so <laughs> and what um, year approximately I'm just trying to uh, 97 oh cool yeah so uh, you know that definitely just dated me so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I worked in LA for quite a while and um, eventually made my way into on-air promotions and marketing um, I wrote True Hollywood Story. I actually was down, I flew down here or out here from California to interview Ivana Trump at her house during um, one of the True Hollywood Stories that I was producing and writing, which was very interesting. And, um, and we can go into that little tidbit later. Um, I worked for Playboy TV, so I spent lots of time at the Playboy Mansion with Hef and the girls. Um, and, you know, I got to meet a lot of whole really podcast cool celebrities. That. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not for Owls young years. <laughs> after dark. We'll have a whole episode about uh, you, Hefner, and the, the Playboy Mansion. I've got some stories. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, you know, so I lived in, in L.A. for quite a while, and I worked in entertainment broadcasting, but I really wanted to live in New York, and I feel that everybody should at some point in their life, especially before you settle down and have kids, live in New York because the people that you meet it, there it's inspiring and everybody really wants to um you know to make it there right that's why they say let's be honest it's just like everyone needs to be uncomfortable on a on a, on a seven train or a four five train where you're like why am i in the subway right now and then also <laughs> like you built strength right yeah. great. Oh, if it doesn't kill you it'll make you stronger for yeah. sure so um then in in new york i landed a job pretty quickly with viacom so i was working for nick jr nickelodeon um, but I really wanted to be with MTV. And my dream ever since I was little was to be a VMA or um, a, a VJ for MTV. Of but, course. But and for everyone listening, if you like, don't know Like, what's MTV, a VJ? I don't I, remember. I don't like know the that. The 90s was crazy <laughs> MTV. Like, every child like was glued to the TV and everyone oh, yeah. watched I MTV loved MTV, MTV too, Awards. but I don't remember VJ. Do you remember MTV when they had videos? Yeah, yeah. the music okay. videos were <laughs> the best. And Venus VH1 and too. VH1 and like all, all the shows. Like, Room Raiders, like all that stuff. Yes. Yeah. So they had TRL, which was yes, total TRL. Recall, yeah, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. Oh, who was the host? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There you yeah. go. Right. Uh -huh. And that was and then M and Carson Daly, uh, Christina Aguilera. Spears, that yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, Brittany. Girl. Like that was like my that was like my childhood. Like th those were the people I looked up to. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And in hindsight, you probably shouldn't. Yeah. Know. Right. Right. <laughs> so I worked at MTV for a while, um, and I bounced around to different networks there within the Viacom family, and then in um, 2014. I won an Emmy for MTV for some work oh. that I had done for writing and directing a, a PSA, public social announcement, uh, for one of their scripted series. And, you know, I feel like I had done everything within the TV world that I wanted to do. And, and I love production. But once I started settling down and I had my kids and I realized I can't keep commuting into the city because at that point I was living on the Jersey Shore. And, um, you know, I was, I was just burning the candle at both ends and since I'm from South Florida originally I'd come back for visits and after 16 years coming back and forth and seeing how much South Florida had changed it's become so much more culturally diverse it's there's so many more opportunities for people who are in broadcasting in the arts I decided you know what let me just go back to Florida mm -hmm. so about seven years ago we moved back here and um, I did some production in the integrated marketing world for Lifetime, for Fox Business. Um, I continued working on my voiceover career, and I also started doing some on-air coaching. So for those CEOs who are recording or filming videos and they look very stiff, those are the types of people that I work She's with. She's pointing at me, guys. <laughs> no, you like, seem like uh, you've had Jason. some training. 
So well, just by trial and error, mm-hmm. right? When when you're in business like yourself, and I got thrown to South Florida myself, and I had to figure new things out in the financial service business, I'm like, I got to do a podcast. I got to differentiate myself, and I sucked in the early days because. You know, back then, people weren't used to going on Zoom as much. And back then, you're like, do I want to be filmed? You know, not as many people are used to being on on TV. When the lights go on, you know, people freeze. Oh, they do. So I just, you know, just did it week in and week out. And I've gotten better because of that. Mm -hmm. But but a lot of people just don't don't get out of that. Like, just try it. Just go for it and be embarrassed in the early days. Mm -hmm. And I guess it goes back to my childhood in New York City. My father owned a store called Captain Hooks, and he would throw me, you know, be behind the cash register as people were walking up, and I, I was embarrassed. I didn't know what to do, and he would just, you know, make jokes with customers, and I would go to flea markets and garage sales with him, and I just learned so much from him. He was my mentor, and then coming down here, I was like, I got to do it, right? It's going to be embarrassing in those early days, and I still have those videos up on YouTube. Oh. It was horrible. Yeah, but it's oh my great God, that you're what? still sharing that. Yes, it was horrible. I need to see that. Note to self, <laughs> yeah. we'll be watching. I was staring later. at a camera because we didn't film yeah. back then. We did it. It was a podcast. Podcasts can be edited to make yourself look better. A little easier when you're not being recorded. It's not live. But as you go to like face, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, all of a sudden you can't you can't hit the reverse button and cut it. You're on air. Right. It's a lot different. Like when you were a broadcaster and right? doing the news. It's, it's a different feeling, and we used to do these little videos at the end for three, four minutes, and then I would screw up the people's names, and I'd recut, mm-hmm. and it's just nerve-wracking when you have people behind the scenes always watching you, yeah. right? All of a sudden, that uncomfortableness comes comes up, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's it's just practice. I think that's every profession. People yeah. don't realize that you do anything – hundreds and hundreds of hours like all of a sudden you'll you will become an expert would you agree that most I'd people can be agree. coached oh absolutely and i think it's important to remember that you should always try do one thing every day that scares you i yeah. think that was eleanor roosevelt yeah. and I, I firmly believe that and the more uncomfortable you get every day the more comfortable you'll become yeah. so it's important and you know as far as being able to be coached yeah it's practice yeah. you know and it doesn't mean that i'm going to you know go fly a plane like I would practice right yeah. so everything that you do if it's important don't try that before getting a couple <laughs> lessons like maybe, maybe that one at home kids maybe that one you shouldn't try don't right try now. to fly a plane don't try to I don't know drive a submarine oh. whatever you want to call oh, it to down that <laughs> drive I don't know too soon for that I know I was like too soon so um once I came back to, to South the Florida and I was working in production for a while here um, in the integrated marketing space, it was kind of a B to C, which was yeah. new to me. So I got to deal with a lot of the brands and um, and develop commercials and entertain them, create entertaining programming for the brands, which I found very exciting. But there was a lot of travel involved, and I was burnt out on traveling. So I, I dabbled in the nonprofit world, doing marketing, um, advertising, PR. I ran a a luxury lifestyle magazine in South Florida for the past year, so I got more familiar with the luxury sector. And living in Fort Lauderdale specifically, it's the yachting capital of the world. So as a person who's always thinking about entertainment, television, and then how to monetize that from an advertiser's perspective, I just looked in my backyard and I'm and I'm like, where's the channel for yachts? Because the money's there and it's a huge industry and not just here, but all around the world. And there wasn't a channel for it. So I started doing some research and I decided, you know what, if I don't do it, who's going to and why not? You know, I, I know all the pieces, the parts, and I've got some really great people that I can work with around the world. So in December of uh, last year. We launched Yacht Life TV on Roku. So we currently have an app on Roku. So if you have Roku, please downla- download Yacht Life TV. And next week we'll be on Apple TV. So we also have oh. an app coming out on Apple. And then the goal is to continue growing to Amazon, to all of the other um, ser- the streaming services, and then to create channels on Freebie, Sling, you know, all of the other cool. TV channels. And then the advertisers have a place to actually target that audience of motivated consumers. So that's how Yacht Life TV was created. And, and, then, and then, of course, people want to get through to you because, you know, the yacht owners possibly. Well, and, and that's have a couple of dollars. You actually meet some really amazing yeah. people, and it just opens your, your world because it's not just yachting. It's private aviation. Yeah. I've now flown on private jets. I've been on Sikorsky helicopters. I've been on massive super yachts. And I've met some of the most amazing people who are CEOs who are titans in their own industry. And this is their hobby. 
And, you know, I, I got to borrow a McLaren one weekend. I've gone to F1 races. I mean, I've gone to St. Bart's. I mean, it's just a, it's this amazing world that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily get to see. So Yacht Life TV focuses on it. It caters to the 1%, the people who have those hobbies, yeah. and then everybody else who wants those hobbies. So it's aspirational television, which I think we all need a little bit of sometimes. It's reminding me of what was that thing on MTV where they would show like cribs? Yeah, cribs, exactly. Oh. Like cribs. That's what or yeah. even like the the one where they redo the car. What was that one? Pimp my ride. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like yeah. it's where I it's like that. everyone yeah, wants good. to be in that mansion and like why don't they show ride. those as much anymore? I used to like yeah. the Well, rides. I'm actually those working on two original series right now. And um one of them, not to let you know, too much out just yet, yeah. but we're in the process of filming a very similar show to Cribs, yeah. but on yachts, Ooh, cool. and it's called cool. Level Up, so it'll be out with the pilots coming out soon, and then, you know, we've got some additional programming that's all going to be original, and then also the syndicated programming, but the Pimp My Yacht, Ooh. imagine yes, how cool that I would know. be. I mean, I, I've heard of Below Deck. Yeah, but I think that's the only really like yacht related show. So yes. it's great that you're tapping into this market. Like, and this is the you know. real yacht life. Yes, yeah, that, yeah. That's it's yeah. Heavily produced reality, <laughs> and coming. From I've never it. seen it, but oh, it's fabulous. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I Add love it. Life. It's addicting, yeah. but it's definitely yeah. not the real yacht world. Right, but it's good TV. Okay. It's good TV. Cool. It's like Jersey Shore on a yacht. <laughs> which i i also example. grew up at the jersey shore my parents always there so yeah it <laughs> would be good jersey. Oh, it would be good yeah. if you do put the jersey shore crew on the yacht if you oh, think about yeah. that one it would be kind of funny they'll go over i'll be next yes. level they're yeah. like no that's not that's a little dangerous no one signed that waiver mm. our last guest or two guests ago was actually on the cover of snooki's mag or uh book oh. too um so that's another like fun fact that's if you guys want to watch more, more of our episodes i don't think he mentioned it but that's when i met him i was like how do you have so many followers and he's like oh yeah i was on snooki's book cover when i was a bodybuilder i'm like interesting i'll do <laughs> it cool. it's all connected everybody <laughs> so tell us about um just the different things you're filming you know i'm trying to wrap my head around it. i want our audience to wrap their head around it you know what are these episodes like what are the different you know directions you're going of course you have to start with you know one basic concept and then eventually i i know like many entrepreneurs you're like no i want to do this 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 and this uh -huh. so and give us kind of the first example what's what's going to be released okay so um like i'd mentioned level up um our host is sharon tay she was an msnbc host she was right. on one of the la morning shows for a very long time she's got a huge following and so she will be going aboard some of the yachts. We've actually just reached out to Lauren Sanchez, who's with Jeff Bezos. He created this little bookstore, Amazon. You know him? I think, okay. I think I, I've heard so of him. Have you heard of him? He has a brand Maybe. new yacht. And yeah. um, so we're trying to get on board with Jeff and with Lauren because okay. Sharon has the connections in LA and talking to the, and it, even if it's not Jeff, there's uh, some amazing billionaires out there that will welcome us onto their boats or their private jets and show us how they enjoy the spoils of, you know, their wealth, right? Sure. And how they got there. And I think that's an interesting thing because anytime you go to a marina and you see these gorgeous, massive super yachts, you wonder who owns that and how did they get all that money? And without asking that directly, we can find out, you know, what it took to get to where they are. And because she's such a seasoned journalist, she asks the right questions and she has sure. the access that nobody else would have. So that's one of the shows that we're currently working on. We also work with content creators. So anybody who has a maritime or luxury destination travel YouTube channel, they're already creating this content. And so we have families that are living aboard their sailboats with their kids and they're traveling, not even going you know, on land for a year and they're just traveling around the world. And so what we do is we create series around what they're doing you know, with, it's a 27 minute episode and then we have our commercial breaks. Cool. And um, so that's another one, you know, sailing adventures with actual families. So it's reality. Um, we've got fabulous uh, yacht chefs, which if you've ever, I mean, first of all, trying to make a five course meal at, alone is impossible for me because I make mac and cheese and I don't always make it right. So, 
uh, these these yacht chefs, they work in these tiny galleys and they just create these amazing meals with all the preference sheets and, and they still deliver these gorgeous picture perfect meals. So we have um, a wonderful chef named Dean Silva. It's called Today's World Kitchen with Dean Silva and he goes around the world and he interviews Michelin star chefs both in kitchens and aboard yachts. Okay. So but wow. there's plenty more coming. Wow, that's amazing. And of course, there's got to be a lot of entertainment, right? You know, people who have hundreds of millions of dollars or billions of dollars, they don't just go on a yacht and just take a, a tour when they leave the dock, right? They want musicians mm -hmm. on there. They they want to have parties on their yachts and have other celebrities to join. Can you go into that piece? Like what type of entertainment kind of gets put onto these things that a lot of people aren't aware of? Well, I mean, at the last boat show, we had um, illusionists and music. Oh, cool. I was just going to say, so I don't know if it was my friend, but my friend is like a big illusionist magician. Um, and he was the one that like introduced me to like the whole yacht entertainment idea. And I was like, wait, I live here. Like, why aren't I like, I don't want to do a cruise. Like, you screw that. I want to do yachts. And then I created this sea serenade. We'll talk later about yes, it. But, absolutely. But yeah, he, him and his friend, they're like the two biggest magicians in Palm Beach. Um, so I don't know if it What's was his them, name? but I'm like, what is it? I'm like, spot. what's his name? It John. I forgot his last like, name. Please don't ask me. Please I know. It's like, don't ask feeling. me his name. I, I'm and like, I why is it like, for, why am I blanking on his name? Of course now, but. I'm like, John, TV, John, John, John Bourne, John Bourne. Is that who it is? Yep, that's exactly who I'm And I about. went to him with, to the boat show, uh -huh. um, in West Palm. And cause he was like, let me introduce you to some people, blah, blah, blah. blah. And everyone was like, I'll see you in Spain next month. And I was like, can <laughs> I be on this? Like in this? Yeah. Judy. So I was and like, yes, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yachting world. Um, yeah. So. So if you want to ever want a podcast on it, yeah, we're happy to uh, bring our equipment out there. And yeah. some fun. As a matter of fact, that's <laughs> one of the other ideas that we've been working on. And so my executive sure. producer who lives in LA or just South of there, he's the one that's overseeing the, the level up show with Sharon Tay cool. he is also working on a podcast. So That's we're definitely cool. going to talk about that. Yeah. Cause we had a few months ago, our, I think we were one of the first events, um, in my, no, not Meisner. In Focus Center. Focus Center. Center. Yes. It was like a big, uh, live podcasting event and we had like multiple booths set up and a bunch of CEOs come and we interviewed the CEO of Celsius. And so I think like the, it's so easy. We have this tiny soundboard like to transport now podcasts anywhere in cool locations like a yacht on the ocean. It's amazing. Let's so, do it. Yeah. And make it interactive, which is pretty unique because so often everyone's listening to podcasts, but they want to get more involved. They want to ask that billionaire a question or two, be like, okay, you know, we know what you're doing now, but tell us about those early days. Right. Right. Tell us those days where, you know, you, you had to work 14 hour days and do things that you never wanted to share right and 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 made you who you are today because lots of times people hear the glossy story right? right that that they see nowadays but it's just it wasn't like that right there were so many failures along the way who who and, and those failures typically made them who they are today right. right can we talk about failures for a second failures yeah talk about like some things and they're not always failures but i mean there's just like you know humps that mm -hmm. you know made you who you are today well, I mean, I don't think the podcast is long enough to discuss all of those bumps along the road, but sure. um, I do very much believe that it's not just, it, failures aren't a bad thing, right? Like Thomas yeah. Edison, he tried a thousand times, and then the thousand and first time, he actually invented the light bulb, you know? But it, had he given up, we'd be sitting here in the dark right now. Yes. So um, as far as failures go, you know, I think it's mostly, and this is what I tell some of the younger people that are entering into in the industry, uh, specifically in broadcasting, it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to pivot. And, and um, I went to school for broadcast journalism. I wanted to be an anchor from the time I was six years old. And once I actually was working in a real live newsroom, I realized pretty quickly yeah. that it was depressing. 
you know, I didn't want to talk about people dying and fires. I wanted to talk about the red carpet. Yeah, it's all the negativity stuff. And, and in the newsroom, when I told everybody that I was moving to L.A. and that, that I was going to be working for E! Entertainment because I want to do entertainment news, they all shot me down. They said, well, that's not real news. Mm -hmm. And it was hard because these are the people that I saw as my peers. And this was the field that I always thought I was supposed to be in, that I was going to excel in. But I had to have, you know, a come to Jesus with myself and go, if this is what I want to do, then you just have to shut out the naysayers and you just have to follow your own path and follow your gut. So I would say that would have been, I could have seen that as a failure that I had moved to Austin, Texas, sight unseen, yeah. all by myself, worked at the station. And I thought this was my dream job, a CNN affiliate, and then quit. And I felt, I did feel like a little bit of a loser, you know, because I was like, I can't believe I did all of this. And now I'm just quitting and giving up. But it, it wasn't, it was a, it was a bridge to going to LA and then having all of those amazing experiences and seeing what else is out there. Um, you know, and I mean, there were times where I would screw up and, but I think admitting your screw up, but learning from it is the most important thing. So, and also learning that there's people that you can ask questions of because a lot of times people want to give you their advice because they've done it and, you know, maybe they want to help you out or not see you make the same mistake. Um, after LA, yeah. I'm just, I'm trying to think of any specific failures. I mean, I've tried different things along the way outside of the production world that maybe have the most important out. thing I hear all the time and yeah. is what you're saying is you keep trying. Yeah. I don't right? give the up. The more you keep trying, the more you don't give up all of a sudden you become the luckiest person in the room. And everyone's like, oh, she's so lucky. Sure, you got live TV at the perfect time, right? Mm -hmm. right? When they're talking about, obviously, what's going on on TV right now, it's all in the boating industry right now. And, right. and, and of course, you know, all of a sudden that could be used to your advantage because now all of a sudden Yacht Life TV is, you know, uh, taking off because more eyeballs are on the ocean right now, mm -hmm. right? Right. People are thinking about it. So, especially you know. with our world right now, it's like, waves. let's escape. Every time for waves. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Escape. Escape. Like, let's get, get out of here and just yeah. make our own house. Like, even with like tiny homes, and like I yeah. see on Instagram so many people with their, um, what is it called? Like, where your vans, like van life. Oh, and yeah. Stuff like that. Van life. Yeah. So. <laughs> It's pretty Everybody cool. Everybody wants to escape, right? Yeah. Everybody wants the RV, and the RV world has exploded. Mm -hmm. Ever since the pandemic, everybody just wants to get out. And, and people are trying new things, and I think that's one of the beautiful things that have happened has happened in the past few years is that we're all able to kind of make our own decisions. Employers are realizing that they have to make it pretty nice for you to come into the office and not want to work remotely. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, that's why. At the owl, looking I'm at like, it. free lunches. Our <laughs> HQ ain't so bad or Yeah, no, it. it's not. Nice it's coffee. Really set up. I'll give it Celsius up. All the Celsius beverages. All the Celsius podcast studio. I tell everyone, you want your own podcast? Go with it. Right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there's, I, I don't remember exactly where I was going with that, but um, yeah, life has changed so much. And as far as whether, how you can measure success versus failure, for me, it's not about how much money I'm going to make. It's not the number in my bank account. It's my freedom my ability to be creative, my yeah. ability to make my own decisions for my brand and to work with great people. And and the, to me, I already feel successful, even though we're still in our infancy stages as a network, what we've done so far and the, the small team that we have, they're, they're fabulous people and everybody is really enthusiastic and everybody feels confident that this is gonna be a great thing and what's even better, and I'm, my old news director, who actually fired me from my CNN affiliate in Austin, again, that was that loser moment that I was feeling, <laughs> he reached out to me, right? That wow, that's that a win. Oh, yeah. Woo! Feels good. Yes. Oh, yeah. So it's been about 12 years since we last spoke, and he reaches out to me on LinkedIn and says, hey, if there's ever anything I can do to help you, please let me know. I think what you're doing is absolutely amazing. This is a brilliant idea. And it felt good. That's really awesome. Yeah. Right. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Well, can we talk a little bit about networking, right? Often we see some of the most successful entrepreneurs, you know, don't touch base on this topic much. And behind the scenes, they usually have an enormous network uh, from years and years of just shaking hands, going to grab coffee with people, doing Zoom meetings. And of course, the Owl platform, you know, is 
is bringing that in a different path that you could accelerate it by just making outbound calls and connecting with people instantly. I love it. So tell us a little bit about how important networking is to to your entire career and your and your future. Well, I mean, networking is everything, right? And even just not not just in the business world, but who you know is is going to shape your life. So as far as wasting time, and no offense, but I don't want to go out to drinks and dinner with random people all the time to do yeah. networking. I have a life outside of work, and I also don't want to take that a two-hour lunch so I can maybe schmooze somebody that mm -hmm. will become a future client. So I think it's very important to be involved with the professional industries within your industry. So yes. within the maritime industry, we've got MIASF. We've got the IYBA. Those are, I know it's a lot of acronyms, right? But it's basically the maritime industry. You've got um, Informa that runs all of the boat shows and the art shows. And a lot of that has a lot of overlap because that's the 1%. Um, and as far as LinkedIn, it's fabulous. But what you're doing with the OWL app is next level because yeah. I don't have to waste time going out for drinks and schmoozing or sending an email and waiting for somebody to get back to me. Cold calling, forget it. Sure. But with the Owl app, I know they actually want to talk to me. Yeah. And the best part is you could increase your price to any level. Mm -hmm. So if your price is 100 bucks for 10 minutes to get through, obviously you know people aren't wasting your time. Right. Or anyone willing to spend 100 bucks, you know, even if they're soliciting you, mm -hmm. there's still a reason. They believe in their product so much that they're willing to spend 100 bucks to solicit you and then – a lot of times you're like, wait, actually, that was pretty good. Even though it was a solicitation, you know, I'm, I'm all ears, right? Because right? it, it was a great idea. And it could be someone like me being like, I got this great idea. Let's do an interactive podcast on, on Yacht, Yacht Life TV. You know, I have the, the genius idea. We'll bring all our past guests on there. And, you know, we'll have the founder of Celsius, you know, being interviewed on a yacht. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be like, okay, that was worth 100 bucks. Absolutely. He paid me to pitch me an idea that I maybe will run with, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and I think the other amazing thing, too, is – that the 10 minute increment. So you know that sometimes you get on those phone calls and you're like, Oh my God, can this be over? <laughs> like they're going on and on and on. But when you're calling someone and trying to get advice, like they know that you're paying for that time. So they try to get all the information as concise as possible. And you're like, Oh, like I've had calls on owl before. I'm not going to name names where I'm like, Oh, I have 30 seconds left. Like, gotta go. Bye. And it's like not rude, you know? So that's another little benefit. It's um, a nice way to get out of uh, a conversation. Uh -huh. sure. Yeah, exactly. But maybe it's the New Yorker in me. And I, even though I'm from South Florida originally, yeah. living in New York long enough, you know, time is money. Yeah. And yeah. You know that literally time is very out. valuable and precious. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so you, you don't want anybody to waste your time. Let's mm -hmm. get to the point. We can be polite. I'll ask yeah. you how your day is. And then let's get to business. Yes. Exactly. Well, before, I think we're going to make some calls on the app. So this oh, is the coolest part of the podcast. We're looking down at individuals that are live and telling the world they're, they're happy to take a phone call. So we're going to give a couple a call right now, probably one or two we have time for. And then uh, we're going to get to ask them a question or two okay. live on the spot. Okay. So Rebecca, how are you? This is Jason Hill on the OWL Hello. Podcast. Rebecca, can you hear us? It's Jason Oh, Hell. I can hear you now. Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Good morning. You are live on the OWL Podcast with Jessica Graves. She is the founder Good of Not Life Jessica. TV. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. We talked last night on OWL, actually. Literally after my gig, she's like, how do I make captions on my videos? So shout out to Rebecca. Yes. <laughs> Well, yeah. Rebecca, and she was very, very helpful and it's very easy. And I'm tech challenged. So Yay. thank you again. Yeah. Well, Rebecca, to kick things off, can you tell everyone a little bit about your expertise? Okay. Well, I share with people uh, how to experience more happiness along this journey we call life. And when I say happiness, it's not about what happens. It's it's really an internal foundation. It is a vibration. It's an energy of contentment regardless of what happens and regardless of what doesn't happen. And, and, the, and what isn't really taught is that happiness is a practice skill, just like any other skill from being a, a musician, a, a pro athlete, a, or a, a landscaper, painter, chef. It's a practice skill. So I just share with people what to practice. Well, that's very helpful. 
Okay, so <laughs> so Jessica, do you yes, have a question is. you want to ask Rebecca? Yes, and Rebecca, you're you're preaching to the choir because I absolutely believe that happiness is a, a choice we make every morning, and um, and I love that you're you're helping to spread that word. So, are there any specific books that you would recommend or authors that you'd like to follow that you would suggest? That's a really good question. Well, I'm working on my second book right now, which is called Programmed for Unhappiness. But but my favorite authors are you you heard of David Hawkins? Yes. Yeah, David Hawkins is is no, is number one for me. And then also I like Eckhart Tolle. I also like uh, he's his name is Guy Finley. He's in Oregon. Um, let's see. I'm gonna throw a name, Brene Brown, out there. Oh, I Brene's love her. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Mel Robbins go. is wonderful. Yeah. Mel's good. Now, yeah. now Mel is Mel is good too, and she's. I, what I love about her is she shares behind the scenes. She shares her life. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly. She shares all of it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right, and that's the human condition, right? Yes, but let me let me back up to what you said about it's a choice. Well. When I say program for unhappiness, uh, you, if you if you if you do not recognize that you are programmed, then you really don't have a choice because robots, when they're programmed, really don't have choices. But I do understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. You have to be conscious, self-aware, and a lot of people just aren't. Right. And do you feel that people are becoming more or less satisfied with their lives? And if, and either, whichever answer, why do you think that is? Well, I would have to say less. And the only reason why I'm saying that is just look at the anger in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, happy people don't cause wars. Happy people don't argue. Happy people don't judge. Happy people don't, when I say happy Again, it's it's an energy. Mm-hmm. So the and the, so the question. Let me let me ask a question. So, do you worry? Oh, I, everybody worries. Okay, but- so see, that's I love you. We just met, but that's a program answer. And and the and the worry is a program. You didn't pop out of the womb knowing how to worry. Right. So the only reason why people worry, there's only one reason, and that is lack of tr- lack of trust. Mm-hmm. So you, you can't trust and worry at the same time. Right. I'm not like that, so. <laughs> Rebecca, right? Well, let me ask you, Rebecca. So I have I have two children, and they're 11 and 6. Of course I worry about them. I worry about their safety. I worry about whether or not I'm a good parent, if I'm doing the right job, you know, and guiding them. So what would you say uh, would be a good way to deal with that type of worry? Okay. I love this question. And mine happens, my son happens to be 38, so I was there. But but whatever you're whatever you're vibrating, that vibration of worry, that's what you're that's what you're teaching them. And put your seatbelt on for this one. That's what you're teaching. So you're really fear based worry about their safety. Well, if you trust that whatever is happening is happening for your betterment or to serve your children also. I actually don't even mm, yeah, the, the worry thing. Uh, uh, so my my recommendation, humbly, I say humbly, is just you practice trusting more and you won't worry about your children. Mm-hmm. You, you don't, I mean, that, that is something that I understand coming from a, a, a mother, you know, with young children, but the worry isn't helping them. It's not helping you. Mm-hmm. It's It's really a toxin. Yeah, and I think surrendering also helps with that. There you go. Perfect. Now I'm getting chills. Perfect, yeah. You always give chills on this podcast, Rebecca. She was on the podcast, I think, two, three months ago. Uh, But thank you very much, Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. For joining us. We'll chat a little later, and you two have to, of course, chat. Oh, yes. You know, on Al. I'll make sure she calls you on her way home. Okay, Rebecca? See you later. Speak soon. Thanks, Rebecca. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure. Cool. So we got another big announcement today. We got somebody's birthday. Uh, Stephanie's birthday is coming up. And we always like to surprise people that work here at the Owl Podcast behind the scenes. She does all of our social media and she does an excellent job. So happy birthday. Happy birthday. You all can't see her, but she's behind the scenes. She's smiling. She's got a birthday balloon up. You're gonna blow your Stephanie's got to come. Oh, there, there she goes. Woohoo! Happy birthday, yes, happy happy birthday, birthday. Stephanie. 
She does an amazing job. So when you see all this amazing content that's coming out on social media, right? It's obviously not me. I'm not. I'm not that good on Canva and putting all those creative concepts together. It is. Me neither. It is Stephanie. <laughs> you know, and every week, you know, she's the one resharing all your your posts that come out. So you know, it's important as a business, as you know, right? Yes. To to always give back to everyone working around you, right? Absolutely. I mean, you get what you give, and of that's. Course. For everything in life. So, and this candle will not go out. Did you intend a trick candle? <laughs> I, I hope I'm not um, stealing your wish by blowing it out. I just don't want everything to go. Well, out. I knew that we needed to keep it relit, so that way, if she didn't come on air, then we'd have to give it back to her. So, should I oh not continue to blow it out? <laughs> uh, I don't know. All right. There we go. Ah, uh, she had to come grab it. There we go. But in all seriousness, thank you very much, Stephanie, for everything that you do. And have a great birthday. I know she's headed to Cancun, Mexico for oh her boy. birthday next Woo! week, which is going to be a phenomenal time. Yes. But you also mentioned it earlier in the show. It's 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 really about creating a good environment, right? Can you speak to that a little bit? Right? I think that's yeah, important. So many people, vibes. you know, <laughs> create businesses and they put a bullshit mission statement on the uh, wall. And you know or what? a quote. And they're like, why are people leaving me? Why is my business not working? It's like, no one's come to work. Because people want to be respected. Yes. You know, and if you are going to take the time to hire somebody, yes. get to know them. Ask them questions about themselves. And <laughs> she's still blowing out the candle. Like, <laughs> you guys can't see that. <laughs> you might want to just stick it in some water. I don't want you to burn yourself, though, either. Ooh. Don't get wax on the cake, because then you'll ruin it. Does that work? That's my priority. Oh, it's coming mm. back yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Coming I'm like, can we on. eat that in yeah. a minute? I'm hungry. I didn't eat yet today. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I think we've all worked in toxic environments. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're first starting out in any business, it, sometimes you have a tendency to undervalue yourself yeah. because of your lack of experience. But that doesn't mean that you should be treated poorly. Mm -hmm. So just as an example, when I was in L.A. before I landed at E! Entertainment, I worked at um, ICA. I think I'm saying it right. And that is a major entertainment talent division. They represent actors, writers. Um, and the guy that I worked for, he was a talent agent. And he was such a jerk. Mm -hmm. And he would throw mugs at people. And he would scream at his assistants. And they would put up with it. So mm -hmm. I worked for him for three days. Mm -hmm. And then I left. And I said, because I saw the way you spoke to your previous assistant, I know that this isn't going to work out. And, I, you know, honestly, I did him a favor because yeah. why waste time investing in me if I know right. that I'm not the person who's going to put up with that? Um, you know, the most important thing, and even though we have a very small team of five, I mean, I've, I've overseen and managed teams of much, much, much more people. Um, I think it's it's so important to value the people that work with you, you know, to ask them how they're doing, to know a little bit about what they're going through. Because as much as we want to say we leave stuff at home and you don't bring it to work, we're humans, mm -hmm. you know. So treat each other with kindness, respect. And if you took the time to interview and hire somebody, then you probably should trust them a little bit to know what they're doing. And micromanaging will never get anyone anywhere. So you have to let your employees just do what they were hired to do Give them guidance. Give them feedback in a great, positive way. And look, you don't have to sugarcoat everything, but it's important that we all know you're doing these things fantastically. I would love to see you be able to do this. Uh, you know, maybe let's shift gears a little bit. Let's shift our perspective or our approach. I love that. More bees with Well honey. said. Well said. Mm. Yes, I agree with everything that you just said, of course. It's hard. You know, lots of times um, people try to hire people and then – force relationships and it's just hard you have to be natural mm -hmm. right and i think there's some stats on this that you spend more time in the office than a lot of times your own family right, right. when you think about it, you wake up you get to the office at 8 to 10 a.m most people and then most of them are staying to the office 4 to 7 p.m but then mm -hmm. you know lots of times you have kids they're going to sleep right? right and then and and you literally calculate the hours it's like you better be around people you like at the end of the day mm -hmm. right and, and like-minded people so that way, you know, as you're scaling, like it's a team and right. you're growing together and you could have fun, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing better than waking up on a Monday morning excited to go to work, right? I am excited, mm -hmm. right? 
almost too excited, you know, the girls <laughs> will say. They're like, why are you so excited to come and work right. on Monday? I'm like, how's your home I'm life? Excited, <laughs> I'm excited to see you guys, right? No, like, I'm excited, like, too. I'm like, this is the coolest to. place I've ever worked. Like, seriously. So. She actually said that when yeah. we weren't on, yeah. on camera. I, I re- I'm not lying. Yeah. She came in a really good time. We were, like, doing, like, multiple <laughs> events. Like, we were going to PodFest. We were throwing the Boca Center event. Oh. And, like, of course, we were on a lot of major CEOs. Like, CEO Tent World was there, Erica's Plumbing. SA company. Oh, SA company does a lot mm-hmm. in the boating world as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just like, she was like, what the hell? This is so cool. Yeah. Every week I'm meeting different business owners at the yeah. songwriting event. Yeah. Cystic fibrosis. Yeah, I know. Right? Uh, yeah. But I give credit to Danielle because she actually runs with those opportunities. Mm-hmm. Right? When we had uh, Ron Saunders on the Shrimp Tank podcast, our other show, right? He was the featured expert on Owl. Right? And you know how many times I hear people like, yeah, your app's cool, but it's not for me. I go, what do you mean it's not for you? We have every single week two podcast guests like yourself. Mm-hmm. Come on. Follow them. You get a notification when they're live. Call them. Yeah. What is really hard about this? Danielle called him, said, I'm a musician. And he's like, well, I have one opening, right? And she ended up filling that opening. Great. Right? But she took that 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 effort to call that individual, and it sparked an opportunity. So mm-hmm. it's, it's just so cool when you, you, you have people around you to just – you know, run with things and you don't have to micromanage. And it's inspiring, isn't it? When you meet people who are doing something that you want to do. And Mm -hmm. with the OWL app, there are people that are succeeding in the field, whichever one it is that you want to succeed in. And they're open to giving you the advice. They're making the time for you. Totally. That's, that's, you know, priceless. Yes. And I'm sure, you know, as a leader, it's like nothing feels better than waking up and like seeing the creativity go to work. Oh, I love it. I wake up and I'm like, I see Stephanie put a posting up about like office hours. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't even see it coming. I just let them run with it. I'm not like, let me see the post before it gets up to Instagram or TikTok. Yeah. The same thing with you. You know, you were doing some videos in the office yesterday. I'm like, I saw it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I didn't even know that happened in the office yesterday. Yeah. 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 And it's just it's just unique. Well, I I have a fabulous social media uh, coordinator, manager, and he does wonderful work and, you know, but it's a collaborative process and we work so well together and he surprises me all the time and I I love the way he writes and so it it works out pretty well. And, you know, I I don't think I micromanage him too much, (laughs) but you'll have to ask him. Yeah. Cool. (laughs) Well, I think that is everything we have for today's podcast show. Jessica will be live on the Owl platform probably later today, mm-hmm. next Monday. She's going to be one of the first people that do Mentorship Mondays, so definitely yes. follow her, and you will get a notification when she goes live. And, of course, you know, pick her brain about anything we talked about during today's episode. Right, one of the unique Literally this- anything, from <laughs> anything. TV to Playboy TV to, you know. Get me excited here. All of a sudden, <laughs> nice. I was going to be like, why did you sit speaking to Jessica all day? <laughs> what, what is going on there? Cha-ching. No, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Uh, but seriously, thank you for, for coming out to the podcast uh, this morning. And uh, um, anything you want to let our guests know, you know, I guess URLs, Instagram handles, where oh, they can absolutely. find you. Other than, you know, of course, the OWL platform. Of course, other than the obvious. Um, please follow us on Yacht Life TV. Um, that's our, our URL, yachtlife.tv. And on Instagram, the Yacht Life TV. <laughs> and um, and yeah, I've, you can visit me on LinkedIn as well. We have a Yacht Life TV LinkedIn, and all the information's on there. If you have Roku, please download it. If you have Apple TV, download it, and you know, give me a call if you want to talk anything production, writing, you name it. Just give her a call. It's that easy. Yeah. Well, thanks everyone for listening. We will be yeah. back next Wednesday at around 10 a.m. Actually, just kidding. The following Wednesday. Peace. <laughs>